Hello, and welcome back to Part107DroneSchool.com, a members-only service of PhantomKnowledge.com. The FAA has released an official study guide to assist those wishing to become a Part 107 remote pilot. That's great news, because it means we can now focus our training to be laser-specific, providing only the information needed to successfully pass the Part 107 knowledge exam. Now, as I've mentioned before, Part 107 Drone School is a tutoring system, and not just an audiobook. So I'm not going to read you everything word for word out of the study guide. Let me summarize the chapter for you, but before I do, I'd like to explain where all of these images in the study guide come from. They're all snippets from aviation sectional charts. Full charts are available for free at skyvector.com. You don't need to go there right now, but keep that in mind as we progress through today's lesson. Let's get started with Class A airspace. Class A airspace is at 18,000 feet above mean sea level, or MSL. So forget about it, your unmanned aircraft isn't going that high. Class B airspace is next, and that's going to surround the busiest airports in the world. Think LAX, O'Hare, and JFK as examples. Generally, Class B extends from the surface to 10,000 feet MSL, but it can be tailored to specific airports, so you've got to pay attention as to where you're at. Look at the yellow upside down wedding cake in the image, and you'll see that class B is narrowest at the center, and then the next tier up gets a bit wider, and then the next even wider yet. Manned aircraft pilots in class B airspace are operating under what's called instrument flight rules, or IFR, which means they may not even be looking out their window, or if the weather is bad, they may not see anything outside the cockpit window anyway. But they're trained and equipped to fly blind which means they have no way to see and avoid you. As a remote pilot, you must receive authorization from Air Traffic Control, or ATC, before operating in Class B airspace. Now, this doesn't mean that you only have to notify them or leave a message for them or file a NOTAM. It means that you must receive clear and specific authorization. So don't even think about flying into Class B airspace without it. So that covers Class A and Class B, so you can probably guess that Class C is what's going to come next. Class C airspace is like Class B's little brother. It surrounds airports which have a control tower and radar approach control, so again, manned pilots may be flying IFR and unable to look for you. Class C is two-tiered upside-down wedding cake with the center column typically extending from the ground up to 4,000 feet MSL, and then the outer wider tier extending from 1,200 feet up to 4,000 feet. Again, remote pilots must obtain permission before entering Class C airspace. Let's look at Class D airspace next. The wedding is over and there's no more cake. Class D is just a straight column which extends from the surface to 2,500 feet MSL. Airports that have a control tower, but they are smaller and do not have radar approach control, they may still have instrument procedures, so manned pilots can fly in and out during inclement meteorological conditions, or IMC, meaning that they will be flying IFR, instrument flight rules. So did you catch all that? When it's IMC out, commonly called cruddy weather, where you can't see squat outside your cockpit windows, pilots with the proper training and equipment can still fly around in Class D airspace, which means, again, they won't be able to see and avoid you. So you guessed it, remote pilots must obtain permission before entering Class D airspace. Let's review. Class A, you can't get that high. Class B, it's the big boy on the block at the busiest airports in the world. It's a wedding cake with multiple tiers and usually extends up to 10,000 feet MSL. Class C is similar and extends up to 4,000 feet. And Class D is just a column which extends up to 2,500 feet. The FAA Know Before You Fly app will tell you which class of airspace you're in. So what I want you to really take away from this is Number one, use a resource such as the app to know which airspace you're in. And number two, remote pilots must have permission from ATC before flying into class B, C, or D airspace. So wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Expect to see this on the test. Next, let's look at the two remaining airspace classifications, E and G. I think that's enough information for you for this session. And I thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.